Hey guys, welcome back to the Modeling for Beginners series in Maya. I'm Laz from H3D CGI and in this tutorial we're going to go ahead and carry on modeling this simple object in Maya. So this is where we left off last time and in this part we're going to go ahead and carry on adding some extra bits to this and carry on simple uh, techniques and tools uh, to go ahead and add some extra bits and bobs to this piece before we're going to go ahead and create some more complicated um, objects. So the idea of this tutorial is uh, just to get you guys used to modeling around in 3D space, get you guys used to um, changing perspective, moving around and so on uh, before we go ahead and start creating some more complicated bits I want you guys to feel comfortable um, with these simple bits so it's not really about what we are modeling it's more about getting used to actually working in Maya okay so let's go ahead and create this sort of arc piece for the top of this object we're going to go ahead and use a cylinder for this so let's go ahead and click on our cylinder and then I'm going to go ahead and drag probably from the center of this uh, sphere so I'm just going to go ahead and drag until I sort of get the right size okay so I'm going to go ahead and just probably drag around here and now it will ask us to go ahead and drag it high and I'm just going to left click and drag it a little bit so it will give me a rough um, sort of size okay so once we have that uh, we're going to go ahead and just adjust this a little bit so I'm going to go into my front view press W to go and get up the move tool and now I'm just going to hold down X on my keyboard and select click this axis and this way it will only snap in this direction okay so holding down X we went through this last time we'll make sure that um, it will snap to a grid point so I'm just going to go ahead and press X and click to this um, X, X's okay and that way it will snap right in the middle so now that I have that and it's in the right place I'm just going to go ahead and we're going to scale this up a little bit so I'm going to select my object press R on my keyboard and just go ahead and pull this a little bit to make it a little bit thicker like so okay so that looks pretty good uh, once we have that I think we're going to go ahead and increase the divisions of this just to make it a little bit smoother. So we're going to go, we're going to select our object, new attribute editor. Uh, we currently have our attribute editor up there, but I want to go into my channel box. So I'm just going to press Control A, and as you can tell, it will um, go ahead and change to a channel box. And then I'm going to go into my polypipe inputs, and then go ahead. And here we can also go to ch change the radius and the height and thickness and so on. And one thing that we can note uh, before we go ahead with this is that every object that you create will have its um, inputs still in the history box or the channel box. So you can always go ahead and after you create an object, you can come into its input and uh, go ahead and change the subdivisions of it and change the subdivision high and so on okay now one thing that you should note is that if now I go ahead and duplicate this object with control D I'll just move it to the side as you can tell this will not have the history built into it so it's just one thing that you guys should note it will only uh, have the channel box for the objects that you just created so let's go ahead and into our inputs and I'm just going to go ahead and increase the subdivision to about just a little bit more, probably like 30. Well, that was 31. I'm just going to go ahead and, oh yeah, by the way, uh, if you select the text and then middle mouse button drag, that's the way I'm increasing it interactively. You can also go ahead and type in a number. If I just can go ahead and set this to 30. Okay, so I get a nice and smooth result. So once I have this, we're going to go ahead and we don't really need this bottom half of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go into my side view. And there are loads of stuff in the way. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and isolate this piece so I get a better view of what we're doing. And that's this icon right here. So you can just press that and it will isolate your collect correct. Sorry, I can't speak your current selection. So once we have that, I'm just going to right click the object, go into my components. Once we are in components, I'm going to go ahead and select face. And that way, I'm just going to left click and drag and select all these bottom faces. Okay, now what we can do, we can go ahead and press delete on our keyboard to delete it. 
And as you can tell, now we are left only with the arc that we need. So now I'm going to come out of my isolation mode by clicking that icon again. And now we have the piece that I'm looking for. So that looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and scale this down just a bit so this is not hanging out by pressing R and just scaling it in like so. Okay, so we have that done. Now basically I'm just going to go ahead and, oh no, go ahead and duplicate this around my object. So I'm just going to go ahead and press Ctrl D to duplicate. And if I press E on my keyboard, it will bring up rotation. So I'm just going to rotate it roughly into the position I want and in our channel box we can see how much I'm rotating so instead of having 91.63 I'm just going to go ahead and change this to 90 degrees so it's lined up perfectly okay that's great let's go ahead and duplicate this again one more time and rotate it around 45 degrees and again I'm going to come into the channel box and change this to 45 let's go ahead and duplicate it one more time and that will be around here and that will be minus 45 degrees okay so that's great basically got the um, these arcs that I was looking for so let's go ahead and add in um, some extra detail to this this is going to go ahead and create some pipes that will go around this piece around here so let's go ahead and probably go into our top view okay and I'm just going to zoom out what we're going to do next is we're going to go ahead and create a torus. So I'm going to go ahead and click the torus and then click in the middle of my object. This is going to go ahead and drag it out roughly the size. It's not even really the size, it's just roughly the radius that I'm looking for. So probably around there. Now I'm going to go into my perspective mode and it will be in the middle of our grid. And now it's asking me to change the uh, thickness of it. So I'm going to turn that down a bit. Doesn't really matter. And then now I'm just going to, once it's created, I'm just going to press W to move. And I'm going to go ahead and move it into position where I roughly need it to be. So once it's there, I'm going to go into my inputs and play around with the radius and uh, so on around here. So let's go ahead and change the radius. And if your slider is really sensitive, like mine, you can go ahead and click this icon twice and then go ahead and slow this. Um, little slider down so it's only a little bit green and that way you'll be able to um, able to control this a little bit more precisely okay so that's probably a bit too thick or thin I'm just gonna go ahead and turn down the um, radius of this and then turn the section radius up so it looks a little bit like that before we go ahead and play around with this a bit more, I want to make sure that this is in the center. So I'm just going to go into my top view and I hold down. You can go ahead and isolate and then I'm going to hold down X to snap it exactly into the center and just come out of my isolation mode just to make sure that this is lined up exactly at the place where I want it to be. I'm going to go ahead and turn up the radius. So I want this to be in the center of that, um, in the center of this polygon. So I'm going to go ahead and can turn up, play around with it a bit more. Okay, so that looks nearly great. Well, you could probably play around with this forever, but that looks all right to me. Ish. And before we go ahead and do that, I'm just going to turn up the um, subdivisions. So this will be a little bit smoother. Okay, something like that will probably do. And I'm just going to turn down the radius of it just a bit more. Okay, so it's great. So once we have this, we can just go ahead and duplicate this. And before I do that, I'm just going to move this down a bit. Like so. And I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this with Control D, move up. And then I can, and like I said, now we don't have the uh, inputs anymore. So we're just going to go ahead and use scale to scale this in. And then go ahead and do that one more time. And it's probably going to sit somewhere around here. And again, use a scale tool to scale tool to scale this in. Okay, so that's great. That looks pretty good. Okay, so once we have these pieces created, we're just going to go ahead and add in some extra detail to this piece instead of adding in the spikes to these. So 
The mechanics to create that would be exactly the same. So if you wanted to go ahead and replicate the same effect that was in the preview image, then you can use the same technique as we're going to use here to create the spikes on the top of this. Okay. So that can be sort of your homework and uh, working out things because one of the best ways to learn things is by just using Maya and play around with things. So what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and add in some, um, bits and bobs to um, this piece around here. So let's go ahead and isolate this. Then we're just going to go to modify and make this live. So I'm holding down space, go to modify and make live. You can also go ahead and do that by coming up to modify here and make live. Okay. So once I have that, I'm just going to go into my front view and we're going to go ahead and just pull out a cylinder roughly in the center of this polygon like so. Okay, and I'm going to go into my perspective mode and drag out a height like so. So that looks pretty good. And now it disappears. The reason why it disappears is because it's a new object and we're in isolation mode. So it thinks that that object doesn't have to be isolated. So let's go ahead and come out of our isolation mode and let's go ahead and make this piece not live so you can select it. Okay. And once we have that, we're going to select both of these and go to isolate. So now that we have that, we can actually go ahead and duplicate this. I'm just going to go ahead and move this out a bit and go ahead and scale it down. Okay. Let's go ahead and move this out just a bit more. Okay. So that looks great. Let's go ahead and unisolate this. And what I want, I want all um, loads of these all the way around this um, cylinder. Okay, so let's go ahead and duplicate. I mean, group these two together. Press Control G. And if you come into our outliner, you can see it all the way down here. That it's been named Group Three. So this is your outliner, and in the outliner, you can see all the objects that you created. So once you get a bit more advanced with modeling and so on, it's a good idea to keep this tidy so you know what each thing is. So let's go ahead and just select that group and we're going to have to go ahead and move its pivot into the center of this cylinder. So what we're going to do, we're going to select this and select that group by holding down control. So I'm selecting it in the outliner. I'm just going to go ahead and select that cylinder and hold down control left click to select that group and then go into isolate. So once we have the group, only the group selected, as you can tell, it's pivot, it goes into the center of the, um, goes into the center of the world, I mean the grid. But what we want is we want it in the center of the cylinder. So we're just going to press insert to go into pivot move tool. And then we're just going to go ahead and hold down V on our keyboard and middle mouse button into the center of that, um, into the center of the cylinder to get that snapped in there. And once we have that at the right place, we're just going to go ahead and press insert again. And now we can go ahead and start rotating this around. So let's go ahead and press control D and then press E on my keyboard to go into the rotation tool. I'm just going to go ahead and rotate this roughly. So it seems like it's going to be around minus 10 degrees. So let's go ahead and try that. Probably minus 12. Yep. That looks about right. So now I'm going to go ahead and access this group again and press shift D and don't do it yet. So let's go ahead and rotate this minus 24. And now we can carry on pressing Shift D to make it rotate all the way around. Okay, and it should be nearly there. We can also go ahead and use Duplicate Special that I've shown you in the last part to do this. Some uh, people prefer to do it this, this way so you don't have to play around with how many duplicates you need, okay? So it's a very nice and easy way to duplicate things around another object. So let's go ahead and come out of our isolation mode and we got this piece created as well. 